that uh, two things stuck in my mind when I went out there to kill Catherine. I, I was struck by how old that church is, mm -hmm. and the very and I started thinking there was a real possibility that this saint or this Catherine came here about the same time as St. Patrick. It looked that old to me. Uh huh. But the other two other things. One was. Twice I heard those people out in West Cork don't think they belong to any organized country. I heard it on the radio and I heard it, I read it in the newspaper. Uh -huh. And that reminded me of Butte America that doesn't yes, feel yes, like yes. it belongs to any organized yes, country. Yes, yes. I saw the similarity. And then the other thing was uh, I felt that if somebody was going to smuggle guns into Ireland, that harbor, the second largest in Europe, I yeah. got a kick out of that, was a good place to do it. Yes, yes. Especially if you had people like J.J. Lynch and Yes, Some yes. guy named O'Sullivan and Hannon yes. and all those characters from that part of the country. Yes. Any yeah. thoughts on both of those things? That uh, you know, they certainly, they sense, they did, you know, being deprived of the language to a great degree. Hello? That sense of nationalism, of, you know, well, not just nationalism, of, of self-worth to a very large extent damaged and there were there in a sense there was a time when they had to say uh, what, what's the thing we have to hold on to most our traditions our culture or the faith they held on to the faith but but they did they they lost so much in the anglicization of Ireland uh, you know in, the, in my father's childhood you had a blessing that you said, I compared both once with a rabbi doing a religious emphasis week out in Moscow, Idaho. He was down from Spokane, and we were talking about different blessings. My father was dead by then, so I couldn't ask him. And he was ahead of me by one. And that's the prayer you say when you sit on the potty. And uh, God would make us the openings of our bodies to open and close at the right, proper time. You know, it's just a Jewish prayer for that. But I didn't know any Irish prayer we were never taught. But you had a prayer for breaking up the coals at night. Because, you know, unless you were wealthy, you weren't going to buy matches. You had to keep a flame going. But if it went out, you had to go borrow one from your neighbor. And uh, there was a prayer that you said at night so that uh, there would be enough for the, uh, for the morning. There was a prayer that you said when you saw the church. Not, to, not when you got near it, but when you're close enough to see it. Mm -hmm. The prayer that you said for thanking God for that. There was a prayer you said when you entered the church. Then there were the prayers you said for your animals and so on. There, the whole day was suffused with with the consciousness of God's presence and uh, seeking His blessing. Very, very comparable to that of a devout Jew. And uh, that was a very common thing. And some of these places, uh, for example, Valley Ferreter at the tip of the Dingle Peninsula. Mm -hmm. My father had a close friend who also wrote poetry in in, uh, in Gaelic, Seamus Moriarty. He wrote under the uh, pen name of the Spalpeen Fonic. That's the wandering uh, agricultural boy. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and the, the, the worst thing, you can imagine people living such good lives, such saintly lives, really. The worst thing that happened in Valley Ferriture in several generations was somebody found his pitchfork had been stolen. And you know, there, there's in every class, uh, when you're going through high school, for example, there's always some kid that's terribly self-conscious. And often there are a number of them. But there's one kid in Valley Ferriture, he thought everybody was looking at him. They weren't really, but he thought they were. And, and he didn't want that to be blamed on him, that the pitchfork was stolen. So it was an upcoming feast day, and loads of people would be going to confession. And he got into the confession of making sure he got there when there was a big crowd. And he got lined up when he got in, confessing a person gave him. And said, he said his sins and then in a very loud voice but father one thing I would never do is steal a pitchfork I tell you the Irish are okay. natural politicians 
his way of exonerating himself before the parish. There's a thinking of confession. There's a beautiful way that they put that missing mass, for example, in Gaelic. You don't say, I missed mass. In Gaelic, you say, Kailas and Tafran, I lost a mass. I think theologically that's beautiful. I lost it. My opportunity to go yes. to mass. I lost a mass, Father. Kailas and Tafra. And, uh, oh, there's so many to me. Was uh, of someone who had just died. Uh, uh, and I don't know where he got it. Maybe from his mother's people in Kerry. Uh, uh, and his mother's people, Terry's mother's people, came from Caradaniel, where the O'Neills came from. And uh, it's. Uh, of someone who died saying, he is on the path of truth. That's beautiful. Yeah, you know, the uh, pagan Irish had a couple of words for paradise, what the Greeks called paradise. And uh, the pagan Irish, the most popular one, at least it survived longer, was uh, Tirden Om, the land of eternal youth, which very much harmonizes what Thomas Aquinas uh, would teach about it. We, we'd be in some perfect state of eternal use, is a good way to put it. Uh, 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 much better, to my mind, than the Jewish way that we've inherited. The Jews have been slaves, so to say, eternal rest, to have lots of food, uh, a, a great banquet like in Isaiah, and rest, a chance to rest. That was the Jewish ideal of, of heaven. But it seems to me the Irish ideal is closer to the mark, uh, having the advantage of the faith, of course, of saying it's the land of eternal youth where we'll all be without uh, uh, any uh, defect. But I finally told the rabbi, I said, you're one up on us and on the number of blessings you can have. He was a lovely man. Well, you know, I, uh, I'm almost out of film here, but I want to, I have a comment. Father Kukulin Moriarty, he had two sons priests, but as Verdi said, the only thing he didn't produce was a daughter. He likewise had two sons who became priests, and he gave them pagan Irish names, but each one had a saint's name added. But Father Ku, by the way, I have his picture out there. He was uh, probably the, the biggest help to Caesar Chavez. Uh, I would visit him every year. He provided Caesar Chavez with his first typewriters and office space and so on. Now, who is this, Father? Father Ku, Colin Warrior. Do you call him Father Ku? Okay. Father Ku. Yeah, he uh, uh, had a wonderful sense of humor. He yeah, kept, kept a strong, patriotic Irish family. Uh, his mother. <coughs> <coughs> His uh, mother, an Irish widow, and as happened here in Butte often, if you do something in the courthouse, you might be able to get your house a polling place. And in St. Philip's Parish, it was all solidly Catholic and solidly Irish, except for two families. There were two native Irish girls married to two Polish boys. They were the only non-Irish in the parish. And uh, when Father Coo was in the seminary in St. Patrick's in Menlo Park, uh, he'd come home, and his mother's place is a polling place. And he was looking at the results of the most recent election on one visit, and he said, he said to his mother, who would have voted for a communist in our parish? And uh, Miss Moriarty rented a place, uh, like, a channel, like a duplex to a Irish lady, uh, uh, spinster. Maiden lady. Yeah, the maiden lady. It was a Murphy. And uh, uh, she said, uh, well, the only two that aren't uh, Irish are the two Polish boys. They're better Catholics than we are. Who'd vote for a communist? Who was it? And who read this? He said, for committee woman, Elizabeth, communist committee woman, Elizabeth Gurley Flynn. And the two of them looked at each other and blushed. But of course, they just saw the name Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea they were voting for a communist. And By the way, this same 
Murphy woman, she, uh, after we got in the war, after uh, Pearl Harbor, and Koo was back from the seminary, and, uh, Murphy said, do you think they win? And he knew that they, not the British. So very apologetically, he said, gee, Barry, you know, just this once, we have to hope that they do, because we're on their side the same before side. now. Well, this shows you the power of a good ballad. And the ballad is Father Murphy, Father Murphy of Boulevard from 1798. 1798 to 1942. That shows you it's a great ballad. And she said to Koo, she said, after what they did to Father Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so, like my mom. So let's 